Hello, in this lesson, I'm going to review chapter 9, where we're estimating mean and proportion using confidence interval, and we are also looking at uh, sample size. So uh, let's review the uh, uh, confidence interval for proportion, and uh, which is uh, P. Okay, so first thing is we need to make sure the requirements are met to use the Z distribution. Uh, no, Z uh, normal zero one distribution here. So to use the normal distribution, we need to make sure uh, the data is approximately normal. And if we meet this requirement by the uh, guaranteed by the central limit theorem, then we say the data is approximately normal. And we need to make sure the sample data is also independent. So to check meet that, we need to make sure the sample size is less than five percent of population size. And that's a requirement to use your uh, the normal distribution Z. Now here, once I've done this, I can compute my confident interval by find, first finding you know, my p head, uh, finding my critical value. And this critical value here, you can be using a table, or you can also using your calculator, which giving inverse norm, 1 minus alpha over 2, 0, 1. They're going to give me this critical value of 0 alpha over 2. Once you've done that, you can just compute this uh, confident interval using this formula. Notice that this formula over here, um, this part here is called your uh, margin of error. I usually we use a E to add it. Where P hat is your point estimate for P. So confidence interval is always your point estimate plus and minus your margin of error. And that's give, for this case, it, it's just P hat plus and minus Z of alpha over 2 and, and then uh, P hat square root P hat 1 minus P over N. So that's a formula. And then for a mean, estimating mean, we need the requirement for using a t distribution again normal t distribution here and either that uh, the data is given some stay in direction somewhere so the data is selected from a population that's normally distributed or that we know the sample size is uh, greater than 30 right to uh, to use to meet the requirement now and we're using a t distribution here again to find a critical value t of alpha over 2 i can either using a table the t table or i can use inverse t and for TI-83, you're going to have to use the table. Most TI-83 calculator does not have inverse T function, right? And then we can use compute the confident interval using one of these two formula here. Now notice that if I don't know population standard deviation, I use this one. And this is the one where we're going to use most of the time. The reason is that sigma is rare known in application. So therefore, or if we know sigma, then we can use a second uh, equation. Notice the only difference is here is either use a t distribution or is this a z distribution, z normal zero one here. Now, once I construct my confidence interval, I can check my answer. And your calculator has a construct can construct the confidence interval for you using the function t interval, right? To get the confidence interval for mean and using one part z interval to get the confidence interval for proportion. Now the second uh, part of the lesson is that we're looking at uh, finding uh, sample size required to get a desired result. So normally this is performed before a survey is given, before you know we start the, the you know, beginning of the study. So I want to see, let's say I want to have, uh, I want to be you know with certain percentage of level confidence given that, and I want the air to be within certain amount, then I, I need to get the sample size to get what I wanted. So for proportion, there's two of them. If we have prior knowledge, p hat, then I can use uh, this equation. Or if I don't know prior knowledge, which meaning that there's no p hat, then I can use this one. And then for mean, uh, we can uh, use the and using this one here. Notice that for all three of them, I'm using z of alpha over two, right? Z alpha over two, because nothing about your um, uh, t distribution. For t distribution, notice that to uh, I'm looking for sample size here, but then degree of freedom requires sample size to do it. But if I, I'm looking for sample size, how can I look for degree of freedom? So here we can really use the t-distribution. So therefore we have using a normal distribution here. All right, let's do some examples. Okay, now common mistake for this section here is that students commonly confusing for which kind of problem you're working on. Am I looking for constructing confidence interval for mean or for, pro, pro, for proportion? Or am I looking for uh, sample size? So read the question carefully as to make sure that you know what they're looking for. So let's read the problem. So a certain brand of peanut butter has a jars that have marked 16 ounces. To determine if the machines are working correctly, meaning that they fill the jars with a mean of 16 ounces, right? 
A quality control manager randomly selects 41 jars, so a sample of 41 jars, from the sampling line and found that the sample mean, again the mean here, is 15.8 and a standard deviation 4.7. And determine the necessary, A asked me to determine whether the example meets the necessary condition to find a 95% confidence interval. So here I just need to check the require, whether the requirements are met for me to perform 95% confidence interval for me. Right? So first let's write down the information. So we have 41 jars, so sample size n is 41. Okay. And with a mean of 15.8, mean sample mean x bar, and a sample standard deviation of 4.7 ounces. Notice that this is all quantitative data here. Let's say, you know, mean how much amount. How, peanut butter in each jar, you're measuring it, and those data are quantitative. So it's for mean. Okay, requirement, we're going to check the sample uh, requirement for mean. The requirement we say for mean is we either given that the sample data is selected from a population that's not normal, normally distributed, or that sample size is greater than 30. So let's check. The sample size here is 41, so therefore it, uh, for sure that's equal to 30. So we want to know whether we can use normal, right? By checking sample size of n, n is equal to 41, and that is given for sure that is greater than 30. So the requirement is met to use the normal uh, t distribution to co construct the confidence interval. B asked me to determine the 95% confidence interval for the amount of peanut butter in the jar. And first, I'm going to do it uh, uh, using a computation formula, and then we're going to do it using the calculator. Computation formula is x bar plus or minus t of alpha over 2s over square of n. Not that we don't know population standard deviation here, that's why I'm using the t distribution. Okay, notice that I need a critical value, and I know everything else except the critical value. So let's find the critical value, all right? We find critical value is important that you actually draw a curve to make sure to look at it, visually see exactly what you're looking for. So let's do that, right? So I'm gonna using a, this is a t distribution and with a mean zero here. And I want looking for critical value, 95% confident, meaning that the area in the middle is 0.95. And area in each tail is uh what is five percent, the total five percent of five percent over two, alpha over two. So this will be uh, uh, 0. Uh, 0. alpha. Let me write it. Let me write it down. So critical value uh, t of alpha over two. So alpha here is 0. 0.05 because 90, one minus the confidence give me alpha. So alpha over two is going to give me 0. 0.05 over two. So 0. 0.025. So area in each tail here is 0. 0.025, and then zero. 0.025. Now the critical value we're looking for is this one over here. Is the value the one on the right hand side, the quad positive one. And notice that to um, I could use the calculator to do it uh, to get the function, or I can also use your table. So let me do the table to do it this time. So and I'm gonna look at the table here. And remember my area on the right tail is uh, 0 0.025. And I'm going to need a degree of freedom as well. Now, df is equal to n minus 1. Sample size is 41, so 41 minus 1 is going to give me 40. Right? So degree of freedom is 40. Let me just write that. Right? So let's go for the table. Okay? Now, on the t table here, notice that on the whole, this column over here, I have degree of freedom. Right, this n minus one, and on the right hand side here, this column on the horizontal title here, those are area to the right tail. We said the area to the right tail is 0 0.025. That's the one we're interested in. Someone look at area on the right tail 0 0.025. Now degree of freedom we say is 40, 40, right? Sample size minus one. Now so I'm gonna draw. Let me draw this way. I'm gonna draw whole vertical down until I meet 40, and 40 is the last one over here. I'm gonna draw one on this side. Notice that these two data, these two here overlapping at a number. And this number is my critical value. So 2.021 is the critical value. So critical value equal to 2.021. I can also find this critical value using uh, a cal computation uh, a calculator. So to find that value, I can also do uh, t of alpha. Let me do two ways, t of alpha over two here. I can also do inverse t. Oh, INB. 
of t, 1 minus alpha over 2, 1 minus alpha over 2, 1 minus 0 0.025, they're going to give me 0 0.0975. And then degree of freedom 30. So let's use your calculator to uh, get that number. When you put a calculator, go to uh, second bars. And inverse t is number 4. And that's if you have a TI-84 calculator. Here, area, I want to put down the total area on the uh, left of your uh, critical value. In this case, it's 1 minus alpha over 2. You can also write it down if you're not sure. Let's say 1 minus 0 0.025, which is going to... You can just do that, 1 minus alpha over 2, so 1 minus 0. Uh, wait, not 0, 0, it's one, one, 0. 0.975, right? 1 minus, uh, wait, I'll write the answer instead. So 1 minus 0. 0.025 or 0. 0.975. So 1 minus, let me do 1 minus, so for, copy the formula, 1 minus alpha over 2, 0. 0.025, right? So that's alpha over 2 here. My degree of freedom is n minus 1, which is 40. And I put it in, and then I would have my critical value. Right? So notice that that's approximately 2.021, which is exactly uh, very, the number we got uh, using a table. Right? So that's how you get critical value. You can do it either using your calculator inverse t or using your table. All right, now let's go back to compute our formula, com uh, to our uh, computation of confident interval. From the previous time we read the direction, we say we call that the uh, sample uh, mean is 15.8, sample standard deviation 4.7. So now let's just plug it in, right? So here now I have x bar, x 15.8, plus and minus t of alpha over 2, that's my critical value, uh, 2 point, that this number over here, 2.021. 2.021. It's important actually to use a parenthesis here to remind myself here, this is going to do multiplication. S over square of n. S in this case is 4.7. Right? So n is 41, so square root of 41. And then we're going to multiply them together. Again, all this can be done using a calculator. And, not, and remember, uh, this part here is called your air. Let me highlight it. This is your air, right? Margin of air. This is margin of air here, right? So I'm gonna calculate it. So let's calculate the margin of air. So first, I'm gonna do a 4.7 over square root 41. So 4.7 uh, over a uh, second square root of 41. I'm calculating the margin of air and times the critical value, 2.021. And that is 1.4834, right? Let me write it down. And okay, so uh, margin of error is equal to 1.4834. And again, I'm keeping four decimal in calculation here. I just don't want to approximate too many times. Oh, by the way, there's a mistake over here. I, I have one extra decimal in my inverse norm here. It should be um, one minus zero point, let me write it correctly. It should be zero point nine, uh, nine seven five, right? Nine seven five. Okay, so now I'm going to have a lower bound, upper bound. So 15.8 minus 1.4834 going to give me the lower bound. 15.8 plus 1.4834 going to give me the upper bound. So when you subtract it, you get 14.316. Then 15.8 plus the error, I got 17.284. Okay, so now let's uh, compute it using your calculator. Right? So let me make the second part to check our answer. So let me write, put it down. So let's pull out our calculator. Okay. So I'm going to go to uh, stat and go to test and go down the list, look for T interval. Uh, that is number A, I think. Let's see, number A, yep, yeah, number A T interval. And notice that there's two ways you can do it. If you're given a data set, I would use data. Right now I'm given statistics, so I'm going to use the second one. So and second one, enter. Now my sample uh, means 15.8. Sample standard deviation here is 4.7. And the and sample size, sample size here is 41. And confident, uh, uh, confident level, we want 95% or 95 confident level. And then just calculate. Right? And notice that that's the confident interval we got uh, using your calculator.
Okay, so we have uh, when I say notice, I write down the appropriate calculator function. And the calculator function referring to is the t interval. So make sure you write down the t interval here that you use. So um, that's how we do it using a calculator. Now let's write a sentence to interpret the mean. Now let's look at what we've done so far before we write it. So we say the machine gonna work properly if you know it has in it, it work about sixteen ounces each jar. So let's think about look at our interval here. Notice that sixteen is a number inside the interval. Sixteen ounces. So therefore, we say the machine is working properly. So 95% of the time, if the jar fills in uh, between 14.316 ounces up to 17.28 ounces, and 16 ounces is in the in them, right? So therefore, we say it actually worked properly. So let's write the conclusion. So we can say we are 95% confident that the mean amount of peanut butter in the jars is between 14.36 one six ounces and 17.284 ounces. And now let's talk about margin of error. What is the margin of error? Well, we calculate the margin of error already. We said that's about 1.4834, so approximately 1.483. That is the margin of error. Margin of error is 1.4483 ounces. Based on the conflict interval, what conclusion could we reach about the machine? We say since the conflict interval contains the um, 16, then we can conclude that the machine is actually working properly. So I write that in a sentence. And in and if I would do a hypothesis test, I would, would say I um would fail to reject H naught, right? H naught. So in this case it's working properly here. And uh, he said, what would happen with the width of the interval if the confidence level changed to 99? Okay, let's you know let's actually do it using a calculator, see what happened. Okay, so let's change the confidence interval from a 95% to a 90%. Let's see what happened to the width of the interval. Okay, so let's go to a stat, test, uh, go down to T interval, and enter the information. We say everything except the same except the level. I'm going to change the level to 90. Clear, so that's 90. And calculate. And notice that my, my confidence interval uh, changed from uh, 14.564 to 17.036. Let me write that down. So um, if we change the confidence interval from a 95%, not confidence level, to a 90%, and my confidence uh, length, the length of the interval actually changing from 2.96a to 2.472. So the length of the confidence interval actually getting shorter. We say as the length of the confident as the confident level decreases, the length of confident interval also decreases. Right. So that's uh, if you're changing the confident uh, um, uh, confident uh, level, then your interval getting shorter, meaning that you're actually getting closer, uh, uh, shorter, more uh, certain. That means right. So you, because six noted that this is my shorter length there in the interval. In the next question, I want we want to look at um, what happened if we, to the air. Say, let's look at example two. How many SMC students would have to be pulled to determine the percentage that hope to transfer to USCLA within 3.5% at 95% confidence and B at 92% confidence? So question actually here, looking at how many, meaning I'm looking for sample size. So to find sample size, Notice that here we don't have any prior knowledge how many students given they're going to transfer each year here. So since it's not given, therefore I'm going to using the um, 0.5 as my point estimate. So A, let's write it. So I know that 3.5 here, percent is my error, margin of error. So E in decimal form is 0 0.035. And we say A asks me to look for uh, my look for my uh, my uh, sample size needed to get 95% confidence. To get that, remember, I need to find my uh, critical value. And remember here, count the interval critical value we're using, this is a full proportion here, proportion of students who hope to transfer. So P, so therefore I need a Z distribution. So Z here, my Z of alpha over two is equal to one minus uh, alpha over two. Oh, let me write by another thing. Let me write the uh, 
uh, inverse norm. Again, you can also use table here, uh, 1 minus alpha over 2, so 1 minus uh, 0 .0, 0 0.05 over 2, so 0 0.025. Again, alpha over 2, 0 0.05 over 2, which is 0 0.0025. Right? And then your 0, 1, and write that in your calculator, you get approximately 1.96. Right. So sample size in this case is going to be uh, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, uh, p hat times 1 minus p hat. Again, we're using p hat as 0.5 here. And then z of alpha over 2, which is 1.96 over 0 0.035 quantity squared, which gives me 784. Right, And that will be for part A. And notice that for part B, I'm going to... If I want to be 92% confidence, now the multi confident level goes down to 92. And what do you guess at the sample size? Think about it. 95% I want to be more confident here, I'm going to be less confident. So maybe the sample size should, should be a little bit smaller than 784 before we calculate it. So let's do it. So again, here my alpha over 2. So z of alpha over 2 inverse norm. Here I'm just going to use calculator, which is faster. And again, one my, my alpha here, alpha is 0 0.8, so alpha over 2 is 0 0.08 over 2, which is 0 0.04, right? So half of the, the alpha. So 1 minus 0 0.04, which is um, uh, 0 0.96, but I'm just going to write it down here. And then 0, 1, write it down, you get approximately uh, 1.75, and then sample size n, same thing, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and then uh, 1.75 over your margin of error and then square and can you use a calculator i got 625. so notice that as i re the confidence level reduce and my sample size the required sample size also reduce okay let's look at question number three suppose that a randomly chosen sample of 1024 airline travelers indicate that 624 check it back Suppose that this meet the condition to find 95% confident level. So I'm going to check. Make sure this meets the requirement uh, condition to construct confident interval. Again, there's two things you need to check. One is independence, one is normal. So the first one is n less than 5% population size. Check for independent. My n here is uh, sample size 1024. Let me use a different color. And is that less than 5% of... The population, again, population here is travelers, like all travelers. And I'm saying about 1,024 airline travelers, meaning that travelers travel by air, so all travelers by air. Okay, this is by all airline travelers. Let's think about it. Is it if a 5% of all the travel travel by air, is that um, bigger than 5% of that? Is that bigger than 1,024? Yeah, that's definitely true, right? We can, that's reason if you say that that's correct, right? Now let's check the second condition. Uh, N, which is 1,024 times P hat. And my P hat is, it's not given here, so I need to find it. P hat is X over N. So our sample 1,024, 624 of them say they actually check the back. So P hat, let me write it, is equal to 624 over 1,024. Approximately is uh, 0 0.694. So 0 0.6094 and then 1 minus that. 1 minus 0 0.6094. You set your calculator, you calculate it, uh, you'll get approximately uh, 244, and that is definitely bigger than 10. So the requirements are met. Now let's find the point estimate for the uh, for the proportion of airline travel that check the back. Again, point estimate, I'm looking for proportion. The point estimate P is P hat, and which you've already found earlier. So P hat. That's your point estimate, that's 0 point, we found it earlier, 0 0.6094. Okay. So part C, find a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of airline travel check back. Again, I'm going to do it both ways. One, I'm going to use the computation formula, and the second time, I'm going to do it using a, a calculator function.
Okay. Now first I need to calculate the critical value and I'm gonna write that the critical value again I'm gonna use a calculator here instead of using a table. So I say well using a calculator I can find inverse norm. I'm using a z distribution here for proportion. So note that we construct confidence interval for proportion. That's a z distribution. So inverse norm, 1 minus alpha over 2, which is 1 minus 0 0.025 and then 0 0.01, then going to give me a critical value. And once I find that, then I'm going to plug into this formula here to get my confidence interval. OK? So here, when I plug it in, I, calc I go ahead and calculate the error. So to calculate the error, we say we take the uh, square root of this fraction and then times 1.96. And I'm going to show you how to calculate in one step in your calculator. All right. So second square root. I'm going to square over the whole fraction. I'm going to put the numerator in one uh, parenthesis and then so this parenthesis of 0 0.6094. Nine four times one minus zero point six zero nine four, and the whole thing gonna be inside a big parenthesis and divided over a thousand twenty four. Oh, make sure type it correctly. Okay, so a thousand one zero two four. Enter. Now that is just the square root. Now times one point nine six. And this is my margin of error. The margin of error is approximately 0 0.0299. Now, if I subtract from 0 0.6094, gonna give me the lower bound, the confident interval. If I add to the error, gonna give me the upper bound, right? So you add and subtract, that's how you get the confident interval by hand. Now let's uh, uh, find the confident interval using a calculator function, which is one prop z, uh, one prop uh, z interval. So let's find it. So for me, clear first. So I'm going to go to uh, stat, go to test, one prop as z interval here. So let's look at one prop z interval, one prop z. This is a test, test, in case they're test, one prop z interval. Okay, that is letter A here. So enter. Now, enter my uh, x is a x a number of people who actually check the back. So in this case, x is 624. My sample size is 1024. And I want to construct a 95% level, a 95% level, and calculate. And notice that our answer here is very close to the one we got compute by hand, right? So that's how you do it using a calculator. Okay, so I write down here again. I need to make sure I write down my calculator function, which is one pop C in. I enter my x and and then a confident level. So note that this is your x, this is your n, and there's a confident level. And once you enter those, then you will get a confident level. Now let's interpret it. Well, interpretation is with 95% confident interval. So I could say we are 95% confident that the proportion of all airline travelers that check the back is between uh, 0 0.579 and 0 0.639. So we can say we are 95% confident that the proportion of all airline, again, there's a population, all airline traveler that check the back is between 57.9% uh, and 63.9% here. But let's part E. Can you say that the majority of the airline travelers check a bag? Why or why not? Okay, when we think about majority, we think of 50% or higher, right? Majority 50% plus. So meaning 0 0.5 or more. Majority airline, well, let's think about confident interval. Does a confident interval have more than 50% or higher? Yes, right? Because notice that the lower bound is 0 0.579, the upper bound 0 0.639. So the answer is yes, since the uh, conf since the confident interval, uh, both the lower bound and the upper bound are about uh, 50% or more than 0 0.5. Let's do one more. This one is involving a data set. Uh, we haven't done one with data set yet, so let's do this one. A researcher wanted to determine the pH of a rainwater in a certain city. 12 samples were collected and pH were measured. So the total of 12 samples. So assume that the data was normally distributed, so normal requirement is met, we given normal. The data is provided below. The question asks me to find a 95% confident interval for the mean pH of rain in a city, interpret the interval and check conditions. Okay. So we're given that the data, uh, 
the data is assumed to be normal. So the requirement is met. And next thing I need to find my uh, critical value and things like that. Find my critical value and find my X bar, my my samples, my, my sample uh, mean and sample standard deviation. And then find critical value before we can do that. So notice that I'm not given my sample mean and sample standard deviation, but I am given a data. So when I given a data, I can process the data using one bar stat to look for my sample mean and sample standard deviation. Right? So let's do that first. Okay, so to process the data, you can go to stat, edit, put enter. Now I already entered the data into L5 in advance. Notice that you can enter the data. You can enter any one of the lists you like. For me, I put in L5. So once you enter the data in L5, go to stat. Using the right arrow, go to calculate. One bar stat. Tell you calculate which list you put your data. I put my L5. And so that's to put L5 here. So frequency here is nothing, just one. So I don't have to put anything. So I'll calculate. Default one here. Now I know that I can find my mean. And standard deviation, mean is a 4.97, sample standard deviation 0 0.3662. Okay, so that's how you calculate your, get your mean and standard deviation if you're given a data. So n equal to 12. So let me write that down. So I process my data. Now move on to calculate my confidence interval. So to calculate my confidence interval, I need to use the t distribution. So I'm going to find my critical value. So step two, uh, we're going to find critical value. Okay, critical, we're using a t-distribution, so let me draw a little picture. You could draw it, but you don't have to. Okay, so I'm drawing the right uh, on the t. I'm using the critical value, the positive one. You could use the table to do it. You can also uh, just use the calculator. Again, I'm going to do it by calculator. Then I'm going to show you how to get it by table. So I'm going to find critical value t of alpha over 2. So t of alpha over 2 is equal to... Uh, inverse t, 1 minus alpha over 2, 95%. We did that one a few times. So 0 0.05 over 2, which is 0 0.025, right? Uh, 1 minus alpha over 2, alpha is 0 0.05. And then degree of freedom is n minus 1, n is 11, 12, so it's 11. So I'll type that in your calculator, uh, we'll get a critical value. So using a calculator, we know the inverse t give me 2.0201. Now if I'm using a table, um, I'm going to go to my degree of freedom 11 and look for area tail that's 0 0.025. So table. All right, let me don't hit that. Let me erase the one from last time. So we said degree of freedom is 11. So first thing, let me look for degree of freedom 11. Let me just highlight that row. Okay. And area on the right tail is 0 0.025. So let me use a different color. Go down. Now the one that's overlapping, that's my critical value, right? That's 2.201, which is what we got using a calculator. And so that's how we can find our critical value using a table. Let's get back to our problem. Right? So we got we got to pass them in the same answer. So that's my critical value. Now, once I have my critical value, I can calculate the error. Now notice that the margin of error and just the t of alpha over 2 times s of a square of n. You can find that separately or you can just plug in the whole thing to find your confidence interval. Here, I'm just going to uh, plug it in and find the interval at one step. All right. So my x bar here is 4.97 plus or minus t of alpha over 2 we found to be 2.201. And I'm going to use a parenthesis around it to make sure, tell myself that's a decimal number and multiply to s over square of n, s is 0 0.3662, n is 12, so square root 12, and that also multiply here, multiplication here. So once you simplify it, and then you will get the, the error, uh, which is the right thing on the right tail, okay? So once I calculate it, uh, to, uh, this expression 2.021 times 0.3662 over square root 12, that's giving me a margin of error, which is point. 2327. When I subtract, I get a lower bound. When I add it from 4.97, I get the upper bound, and that is my confidence interval. Now, so we found the confidence interval, we can interpret it in a sentence, right? So let's write it. So here we could say we are 95% confidence that the mean pH of rainwater in the city is between 4.73 or 74 and 5.202. Right? That will be my confidence interval. Right, so this com uh, this is doing it using hand computation. I'm going to show you how to do it by calculator, construct using a calculator. So let's do it. 
Okay, so to know your calculator, notice that this time I have a data. So to to cal cal uh, compute a confident interval using a data, you don't really need to do you know any uh, find your x bar s and things like that. All you have to do is make sure the data is in the calculator. We recall that I enter the data into L5, right? For mine, the data is in L5. So second, quick, let me check. So once my data in uh, mine is in L5, I'm gonna go to stat, go to a uh, uh, math. Oh, I mean not math. I mean stat. Let me second quick. Oh, second quick. A stat. Go to test. And I'm gonna look for my comp. Do my interval here. I'm looking for t interval. All right. So let me go down the list. Down to t. Now for t interval here, there's two options. You can either using a stat or you can data. Notice that my stat is, is highlighted, but notice that my x bar is approximately 4.97. It's already calculated for me. You can assume that it's in L5. But let me just do data. I'm highlight data, see what happened. Right? Enter data. Now notice enter data, you just tell your calculator where the data is from. For mine is in L5, it's a second five, give me L5. And the confident interval one is 95% level. Frequency is one, meaning each data only appear one time and 95%. And then calculate, and that will give me the confident interval. And now that is that almost that's really exactly what we got by when we compute by hand, which is pretty good. So that's the uh, constructing confident interval uh, for uh, mean. And let me write the calculator function down so you can remember. So we go to stat test, go to number A, T interval, confident interval for mean. And that's for one sample. And then, you know, decide, uh, enter two, two options. One you could put a data, and the other one you could do, uh, uh, enter the sample's uh, information, which is X bar, S, and N. All right, so once you're done, that's all with this. I'm going to finish, commit the lesson here. I'm going to move to the front of the page so you can see the formula page again. So this completes our uh, review for chapter nine. Again, with chapter nine, we uh, will construct confident interval for mean and proportion. We also look for looking for uh, sample size as well, right? So this is confident interval page, and the second page here is sample size formula. And this formula is also available in your formula car, right? So thank you for watching the video. I'll see you next time.